Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Assalamu alaikum. Does die before you die mean how to get out of your body through meditation and not identify with your body like having an out of body experience? Maut qablan maut is is death before death. <clears throat> we said in meditation if you are very much alive and you're a very much physical person. So what was the example we gave was a binary code. People who are very dunya, they're one. When you tell them, look and see, do you see God? They see only nukht and they say, no there's no God, there's nothing out there because they're the one, they're the pharaoh, they're it. So, you see any God? You can't see the nukht. So then the death of the one has to come. So the turuqs and by Allah's order because the person has to be destined for spirituality, they have a calling towards that reality. As a result Allah began to hit their one, the angels hit the one, life hits the one and if they enter into the presence of the shaykhs, the shaykhs begin to hit the one and before the… the <laughs> it's wobbling. So, when, so what they never saw before of God or the heavens or eternity when this goes down, Allah reveals. So the more this one crushes, the more they're seeing the one. So the one whom been crushed, he sees, he sees in his heart that, I know God exists. I see the signs of God everywhere, I see the beautiful creation that Allah has made because that one is dying. And that becomes the secret of pain, that becomes the secret of, of, of war and azab on this world. If everything was just a beatific island with beautiful water and hamburgers on a tree that you could take the hamburger out and just eat it, everybody would be full on one and they would see nothing of God in anywhere because they would just be so onto themselves. So Allah saying, then the hikmah and wisdom of your creation is, you know, pain, sickness, difficulties, crushings brings that down and humbles that creation, humbles the physicality and as a result they can begin to actually see, no there is a creator, there is the light of God everywhere, that there is this humanity, there is these realities. So that's the mawt qabl al mawt that your being it has to enter into a phase of death. If you can do it voluntarily through spiritual practices and the associations, you'll begin to witness. But because Allah is adil and just, He created the grave because the grave does the same thing. Takes the one who's pharaoh, throw him in. So even if he's a big pharaoh on earth and has beautiful velvet suits and has beautiful polished shoes. Have you seen how they, they, they bury some of these top pharaohs? They bury them with the beautiful shoes that never been worn and velvet robes and everything and they put them into the ground like that. What Allah does? Everything is, is destroyed and the one became nothing in the grave. So instead of waiting for the grave to realize, oh my gosh I made a big mistake on my life, I'll inspire people to be, no I don't, I don't think I'm the one, I'm nothing Ya Rabbi, I'm nothing. The more we can deflate, the more Allah's kingdom will begin to appear upon the horizon and then within themselves, inshaAllah. And Allah has immense wisdoms in everything and immense realities and everything. And everything that Allah has written has immense wisdoms. The first wisdom of our way is that death is good. At any time if you don't think death is good, every satanic philosophy will begin to come your direction. So means the Divine Presence is the kingdom we belong to. The state of death is the only way to return home. So death is not a bad thing, it's a great thing because it's a transition back to where you belong. The only people who are sad are the people who left on this side. 
But those whom believe and their works were good and had love, oh they've gone to things that can't be imagined. So when someone says that, why did a child die in youth and innocence? Well because death is a beautiful thing and Allah didn't want that child to be dirtied on this earth. But because everyone must taste of death, even the angels will taste of death when the trumpet is blown. Everyone must come for their physical experience because we are spiritual beings, we are not physical beings. We are spiritual being sent here for a very short physical experience to get a degree and a darajat back to our return location. Everyone has a two-way ticket, nobody was given a one-way ticket and that's the proof of God's existence. If you found somebody who can live here forever and he had a one-way ticket then disproves every religion. But because you will never find anybody with a one-way ticket, they came and they're never leaving. Allah gave everyone a two-way ticket, go do whatever you want to do. You want to be good, you want to be oppressor but I'm going to catch you. And that becomes the reality is we are an eternal being sent for a physical experience. Now there are reasons for every reality that if Allah destines for a child to die at two days, at twenty days, at forty days is because he didn't want them to be dirtied on this earth and the darajat and reality of their soul is immensely high, immensely high. So those whom their children die young, those are like churubeen and they're under the authority of Sayyidina Ibrahim salam. So Sayyidina Ibrahim one of his roles for Allah He's the caretaker of Churubeen, that they came to the earth but their time was short because Allah didn't want them to get dirtied. Their station is of a different means, their malakut reality was already written who they are. It's not written here on earth. These very noble Churubeen souls that they're immensely powerful angels, Allah bring them onto the earth and quickly take them back. They don't have but a breath on here so they did their time, their time was only like one day and go. Versus the likelihood of coming here and spending 40 years and doing all sorts of sins and all sorts of bad actions. So Allah is, knows the immense hikmah and wisdom. So its immensity is something that can't be understood but satanic philosophy, why if there's a God this would happen? Why? Because death is great. And our, our home is in paradise, our home is not in Los Angeles, it's not on the streets, it's not in downtown, it's not struggling like a donkey to go out and get five dollars. We came from paradise palaces and kingdoms with light and immense blessings and, and everything been given to us, that's why. So the dirtiness of this dunya, well we all have to go through it and test it. Good tidings to the ones who come and they do good deeds and good actions so that they can take those deeds back. And then there's many other hikmahs and wisdoms of why certain people, certain children become sick, certain people become sick and they become intercessors for their family line. There's immense wisdoms why some people are dying in wars and battles because they wouldn't achieve what they were going to achieve by their physicality and Allah by virtue of that oppression granted them to become shaheed. So why is there God is there's, this, there's these deaths coming? Oh, because God is so merciful that none of them would have achieved anything. So as a result of their death in COVID Allah wrote for them to be martyred. That's the greatest gift, you couldn't even do that by walking in front of a bus. This immensity of Allah's rahmah and mercy. So alhamdulillah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Can you please explain the reality of barzakh? Is it the same as life in the grave? Yes, that's what we were just talking about is the, the light of the, the life of the grave, that when somebody dies then their physicality has to go and as a result then that has to be the cleansing part. If their soul and their body was too 
mixed and that the body rooted itself into the soul of that person by their physical desires, then there's a tremendous amount of cleansing in that grave. And that's why the cleaning should be outside of the grave with the zikrs, with the practices, with the testing in life so that the one drops and you begin to see the kingdom. The one whom died before he died, when he enters the grave he's already achieved the station of death. So the grave become very peaceful for him, very beatific and Allah expands his grave like a behish, like a paradise inshaAllah. And their souls are free to travel and to move. Greetings Shaykh Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam uh, How do we differentiate between if a person really has a bad character, character or is it our egos telling us so? We're talking about ourselves, right? So it's not talking about somebody else if they have a bad character or my ego's telling me he has a bad character. Is I can only talk for myself, so I have to assume of course I have bad character. And my ego is, is never going to tell me I have bad character, my ego tells me I'm, I have the best character. So the trick that shaitan plays upon somebody is that don't repent, don't ask for forgiveness, you've done nothing wrong and that's a big danger. So the one whom Allah saves with humility they're continuously asking istighfar because they know they've done many things wrong and many things they don't know what they did wrong, they're asking also for forgiveness of those issues. But shaitan comes to the arrogant and say, why do you have to say forgiveness, you haven't done anything wrong? And then holds back the repentance of the servant and cuts them from the mercy of Allah So it's always an assumption that of course I've done wrong and I'm doing so many wrongs. There are so many requirements that we're supposed to be doing on a daily basis of I don't think we meet but two or three of them. What was it Mawlana Shaykh said there was seven hundred sins that the believer will do and they couldn't name more than hundred, ninety of them, they couldn't think of all the other sins. So what Allah <coughs> counts of what we should have been doing from a paradise standard to what we're doing on this earth, we, ha we have to be continuously in repentance and that's why a lot of the wazifa now is making istighfar all day. Astaghfirullah al-Azeem wa tubu alaykh, Astaghfirullah al-Azeem wa tubu alaykh, all the way till afternoon just making istighfar to be washed, to be clean and then salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad to be beautified and the rain of mercy to dress upon the soul inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Please forgive my ignorance, uh, please can you give us the hikmah of calling Imam Ali alayhi salam and Sahaba referred as radiallahu anhu? I don't know the wisdom of that because I say they're both alayhi salam <laughs> We don't want to bother ulama but Allah says salamun hiya hatta mitna al-fajr so Allah's Granting a servant who prays fajr salams, salamun hiya, I'm giving you my salams all the way through your fajr. If the fajr can give you Allah's salams, don't you think these great souls achieved Allah's salams? Of course, so alayhi salam. Why have to say, may Allah be pleased as if maybe He's not pleased and that is something that's not my place to even think like that. So better for me to be safe and say, alayhim salam and Allah says, okay you made everybody to be salams, he's going to be upset with me? No. So he said, okay you, you said for everybody alayhi salam, I'm going to also give you salams. <laughs> You're supposed to think good, whatever good you think Allah give the same back to you. So Allah definitely, Ya Rabbi, you're dressing and blessing them, they're the exemplars of faith, the example of our way. With all your love upon them, Ya Rabbi, also dress me from them, dress me from their light and their love. Instead of saying maybe, and this, I, do, I don't think the adab is correct to say that. that it's even just the fajr is, a, is granting you Allah's salams and infinite dress and mercy. So, alhamdulillah. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam Is it wrong to plan our future like going abroad for further studies or work? Is this considered as running behind the world? Not considered running behind the world but a world that's on fire, I'd, want, I'd be concerned about where you're planning on running. So there are all sorts of examples now, uh, people went to a certain island for a vacation, they can't get out. The countries can't even get them out, people ran to India, they can't get out of India, people ran to vacation places, there's nobody going to take them out of there. So right now the world is on fire. So if you end up wanting to go somewhere, make sure you're not leaving mom, dad and any loved one behind. You have to be all packed together so that wherever you are, you are. But if you just going and you know, you say, I have all these other things I love and attached and you're cut off from it, it's going to be a, a difficult test. So in times of difficulty, it's best to stay where you have loved ones and, and you're all together in case a difficulty came. So the lockdown that we just went through for two years, it just came and hit. So that was already an example. People were stuck on ships and cruise ships just stuck out on the ocean for six months because there was no ship that was allowed to come and dock. So I don't think it's the best time to plan cruises and vacations like that because you go and you never know if you're going to come back, inshaAllah. Uh, as alaikum shaykh as salaam uh, Can you please advise what can I recite to remove calamities? What we just gave of the du'aikunu, inshaAllah as a salvation and protection. We have uh, all the salawats on the app. But main thing is that before you ask what to recite, you have to have recited the awrad, the weird, the zikr of the, the tariqah. That has to be the recitation that has to be done, has to be done on a daily basis. Otherwise everything else makes no sense. That if you're not making the connection, not doing the daily awrad of what the shaykhs have given, the shaykhs of the shaykhs of the shaykhs of the shaykhs from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad If you don't do that on the daily basis, what's the use of asking for more things to recite and just become a collection? Then Allah said in Qur'an, don't ask something that will cause you more harm because everything you ask me you're accountable for doing. So that's why it's best not to ask, I want to do more of this, I want to do this, then later you find out, did you do any of them? No. I just like to ask you know, to do what awrads to do, what zikrs to do. So best to do the ones that the shaykhs have given, it's on the app, do those on a daily basis, be consistent with them. Do the, the weird from the, uh, the namaz and the salah, that what surahs to recite, what weirds to recite between your salah, do all of those, that should keep you busy for hours. InshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum shaykh Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Why is it wrong to promote eating plant-based as part of living righteously for the sake of Allah? I think it's cheaper and healthier so people can serve others more. Why is it wrong? Who said it was wrong? To eat plant-based? What's that? Impossible burgers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We know where that's going though, that a time will come when they don't find food, so they're trying to manufacture food. This, this whole concept of, of uh, sustainability and I don't think shaitan cares for this earth and doesn't care for what you're doing with this earth. This just uh, new religion they're making. We said the organic movement is a religion. It's a, a deviation from belief in which shaitan is playing with people. And that's why we said that, you know, you buy a tomato, you buy another tomato. What make the tomato to be blessed is you say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, um, 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 um. and you eat it and say, Alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah. And when mankind become so arrogant, so arrogant that I don't want this tomato, I want that tomato, I don't want this tomato, that tomato, Mawlana Shaykh Sobat that will be released in the next few hours is that uh, when the cat doesn't eat from his master's hand, you give a talk on that, where somebody complained that my cat doesn't eat except expensive cat food, doesn't eat it. A man came to him and said, I will train your cat in three days. 
<laughs> she said, what? I'll make you a cat in three days to eat from my hand. Ah, Hajib, how are you going to do that? <laughs> Give me the cat. He took the cat, put the cat in a cage with water. Then put a, another bowl outside of the cage with barley dropped into water. So it's very hard barley right outside of the cage. Day one the cat meow, 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 all he can do is water. But he keeps seeing this bowl with barley with joe in it, not, not food, not, nothing in, 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 exciting. By day two he keep drinking his water but he can't get to that. By day three the cat was ready to eat everyone, anything, anything you give to that person. By day three he opens it up and put the joe in his hand he's eating it. Means that the arrogance and pride of people, they turn one ni'mat from Allah down to take a different ni'mat. Then they're not happy with any of these gifts from Allah So once as a believer what did Allah send for us, alhamdulillah wa shukran Allah, because a day is coming where you find no food and Allah will make everybody to eat from trash cans to get their, their ni'mat, to get their sustenance. And at that time they'd be grateful for whatever they can find. Mawlana Shaykh described that they would try to even take the bodies from the ground to eat them because of there would be no food on this earth when Allah stops everything because of the bad character. So then what the organic movement does? Says that, oh no this tomato, this tomato, this not the, you need this special tomato that we want to charge you four times the price for this tomato. But you probably don't know that that tomato is being grown by all sorts of waste from human bodies that are thrown back onto these fruits, right? They take the waste of, of animals and people now in certain countries and they say it's fertilizer and they fertilize these plants. Then they take grey water which is not clean water but water that came through your toilets, they filtered out the solid part of your waste. And they took all of the medicines and sickness that the human body is purging because shaitan wants the bad energy and then spray it on to all the food because shaitan only wants the worst of things for enzyme. You think he's caring about your health? Huh? So then that fruit now is filled with what? All the waste of animals and their fertilization and human now waste and watered with grey water. So then it's filled with all of that sickness and then sold as an insult for four times the price to people. Yeah. And then people just swear by it, they can only eat by that, they can only deal with that. And that becomes now how the faith deviated is because Allah's your protector, Allah blesses the food, Allah makes the energy in the food, Allah takes away whatever is bad and whatever is good. So when, when the believer stops believing that Allah will make it good, make your du'a and whatever you could afford to eat, be thankful for what you have. But somebody naming it with a green label and calling it organic it didn't become good. But Allah has to make it to be good. So then it began to push people in a different way of believing and before you know they start to buy only based on these labels, not based on the ni'mat of Allah as Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah May we renew the bayah life today? Yes, you may inshaAllah. InshaAllah, let's do that and then get to the khatam, these guys are sleepy. Mm. There we go inshaAllah. Awwuzu Billah. I can't see you. InshaAllah <coughs> with intention for the initiation to Naqshbandi's Order through Sultanul Awliya, Ma Shaykh Abdullah Faiz al Dagestani, Sultan Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Adil, the, the shaykhs of the Naqshbandi order, and with the barakah and blessings of Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, uh, Awliya Allah. Fa'awzu billahi min ash shaitanir rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Inna ladina yubayyunaka, yubayyun Allah, wa yad Allah yifawka aydihim. Fa man naqawdu fa inna ma yaghuthu ala nafsi. وَمَنْ أَوْفَ بِمَا أَهَدْ عَلَيْهُ اللَّهِ فَسَيَّتُ الْعَجْرًا عَظِيمًا رَضِينَ بِاللَّهِ رَبًّا وَبِإِسْلَامِ دِينًا 
و به سیدنا محمد صلی الله علیه وسلم رسول و نبی و به قرآن کتابا و اللهم نقول وکیل و حمد لله رب العالمین و قبلنا به سیدنا سلطان الاولیاء ما شیخ محمد نازم حقانی شیخنا و مرشیدنا و مولانا شیخ محمد عادل شیخنا و مرشیدنا و انما نقول وکیل الله 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 حق الله شرف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى أصحابه الكرام ولم شيخنا في طريقة نشبندية العلية خاصة روح إمام طريقة قوت خليك شان نشبند محمد ويسي البخاري سلطان أولياء الشيخ عبد الله فايز الداغستاني سلطان أولياء الشيخ محمد ناز معاد الحكاني مولانا الشيخ الشام كباني الشيخ عدنان كباني الشيخ محمد عادل مع عبد خالق الخوشتواني صاحب زمان سيد محمد المهدي عليه السلام روح الله سيدنا عيسى عليه السلام سيف الله سيدنا عليه السلام ثم سبق الصديق سيدنا عمر سيدنا عثمان إمام الحسن عليه السلام إمام الحسين عليه السلام سيدات الفاطمة عليه السلام وشهداء كربلاء عليهم السلام وسائر وسادتنا والصديقين الفاتحة. Click the link now to subscribe.